What's up guys, welcome back to another video and very recently I covered 10 of the new legendary weapons that came to Borderlands 3 with Mayhem 4 and the Maliwan takedown event and I've yet to cover any of the new shields or class mods. So in this video I'm going to be covering all of the new legendary shields and class mods, where you can obtain them and what they do. So coming in for the first shield being showcased in the video, we have the version 0.M. Now this is a shield, like all of the other shields on this list actually, that has a higher chance to drop from the Valkyrie squad or Wotan the Invincible in the Maliwan takedown event. And I've also seen a few people reporting that they've managed to get this from random mobs within the Maliwan takedown as well. So that is something to keep in mind there when going for this shield. Now in terms of what this thing does, it actually does a few things. Number one is the first shot in the magazine, when the shield is equipped of course, uh, will be amped. So it basically does like double the damage. And instead of taking away a lot of your shield, like some of the other Amplify shields do in the game, it only takes away 25% of your shield when you shoot that amplified shot. Now, in addition to this, when the shield is depleted and breaks, it will also drop a damage amplifier circle on the ground. And this will last for a few seconds, and this will amplify all damage to those who are inside of it. And uh, being honest, this is mainly good for when you go down. Again, it only lasts a few seconds, and you know, Borderlands 3 can be very chaotic, especially if you're on Mayhem 3 or Mayhem 4. So trying to use that reasonably is going to be quite difficult so it's great if you go down it will give you boosted damage to help you get back up and that is the other effect that this shield has now in addition to this this will also drop in a lot of different variants one of the most common ones is a nova variant of course we all know what nova shields do yeah, when your shield breaks it releases a nova blast uh, in the same element that the shield comes in and that's the same for the version that I've got in the video. We've actually managed to get this around three or four times now. And uh, one of the ones I'm using currently is a super giant version that my friend dropped for me. And this one does come with a plus 25 capacity and is also a Nova variant as well. Now, as usual, the level 50 stats for this will be shown on screen. Of course, in terms of the capacity and stuff, it just depends on the variant you get. But in general, it does have a decent capacity with a pretty good recharge speed and recharge delay. It also has the red text stand and clap in which I have no idea what this reference is. As many of you know, I do like to show off a lot of the references in a little bit more detail. However, with this one and some of the other shields, I just have no clue. Overall, it's actually a pretty damn decent shield. There is better shields to use in my opinion, but it is a new one and you know, if you're into collecting all of these shields now that the bank space has been upped, uh, this is definitely one you can keep an eye out for. Coming up next, we have the legendary shield known as the Frozen Snowshoe. And uh, again, this is another shield that has an increased chance to drop from the Valkyrie squad or Wotan the Invincible. Now, what's interesting about this shield and all of the other shields on this list, actually, is they're kind of two shields merged in one. Uh, so for this one, or in this instance, uh, this has the effects of the red card legendary shield and also the Frozen Heart. Now in terms of what it actually does, when you slide into enemies, it will essentially drain all of the shields that you have and deal bonus cryo damage based on how much shields you had. And that's like the main effect of this, you know, when you're going in there with a lot of shields and you slide into enemies, it's going to freeze them very, very quickly. And of course, when they're frozen, uh, you can deal some bonus damage as well. Now, in addition to this, 30% of the Nova damage that it does is also returned to you as health as well which is another great perk about this shield in general. Now, as usual, the level 50 stats will be shown on screen. Uh, as you can see, this does have the red text, give them the cold tolder, which I think instead of referencing something is basically a play on words to the phrase, give them the cold shoulder, but with toes, I guess, because obviously you're, you know, you're sliding into enemies and stuff. So, you know, call it a play on words there for the reference. Uh, in general, it does have decent stats as far as shields go. However, this shield isn't for me. It's not the best shield in the game, uh, but as usual, if you're looking to collect them all, this is definitely one to keep an eye out for. Now for these next two shields, I don't currently have them. I was not able to obtain these through 
I have no idea how many runs I've done of Melee One Takedown, but I've done a lot and uh, these two didn't drop for me, but I can still talk about them, show you where you can find them and what they do. So starting off, we have the Recharge Burner Shield. Now, similar to the Frozen Snowshoe, this yet again has two different legendary effects from two different shields. Uh, this one being the Recharger Shield, and the Nova Burner Shield. Now the shield itself can come in multiple different elements, which is good. And uh, as usual, the level 50 stats for this will be shown on screen. Now in terms of what it does, again, it's basically two legendary effects in one. Uh, the first legendary effect is when the shield breaks, it will instantly start recharging. And uh, this does have a cooldown of 20 seconds. And for the second legendary effect, it's pretty much what the Nova Burner done. Um, when the shield breaks, it will release a Nova Blast, but also when the shield has recharged to full, it will yet again release a Nova Blast. So that's what the shield does. It's kind of intriguing the route they've taken with some of these shields kind of just merging two of them together. And the same goes for the final shield of the video, which is the red card recharger. Again, this is another one of the Maliwan black site drops with a higher chance to be obtained from the Valkyrie squad or Wotan the Invincible. And as you probably guessed by now, this has both of the legendary effects of the red card and the recharger shields. So when you slide into enemies, it will drain all of your shields and deal bonus damage based on your current shield's strength. And also when the shield is broken, it will instantly start recharging with a 20 second cooldown on that effect. And this is actually a really interesting combination. Now, in terms of its level 50 stats, as always, they will be shown on screen, but they are subject to change depending on the variant and level that you get the shield at. The red text for this one is one more kick with feeling. Again, this is similar to the recharger's red text, but instead of once more with feeling, it's one more kick with feeling. So that's pretty much what that red text references there. And that's pretty much it for these shields. That's all four of the new shields that you can obtain right now within the Meliwan Black site. And now it's time to move into the class mods. So coming in for the first class mod of the video, we have the Spiritual Driver. Now this of course is the new class mod for Amara, and uh, in terms of obtaining this, it can actually drop from two different locations. The first location is from an enemy known as Silvestro, who is one of Zero's target of opportunity crew challenges in the Tazinda Ruins region of Necro Tefeo. And the second location is from Wotan the Invincible. Bear in mind as well, you also need to be on Mayhem Mode 4 in order to get these class mods to drop. Now as for the class mod itself, while reading directly from the description it states, whenever Amara activates her action skill, she applies her action skill element to herself. And also, Amara's gun damage is increased while moving, the quicker she moves, the greater the gun damage bonus. Now because of these two effects this class mod gives you, it makes it a phenomenal class mod to use. The ability to simply use your action skill and proc yourself with elemental damage perfectly synergizes with the elemental projector artifacts that give you 90% boosted damage to the elements you're affected by. In addition to this, because you can proc yourself, the damage over time effects that your own action skill will be giving you will also proc some of your skills. The main one being mindfulness. This increases your movement speed and shield recharge delay for each stack, and you can now get max stacks by simply using your action skill. And because the class mod gives you boosted damage the faster you move, it all synergizes perfectly. I'll also leave a link down below to a build you can use for this class mod. Anyway, moving on, as always, let's talk about the red text. Uh, for this, it states, only on the brink can we see so clearly which is a reference to the song Nocturne by Tesseract. For all, it's an amazing class mod for Amara and definitely one worth farming for. Coming up next, we have the Rack Pack. This of course is Flak's new class mod and this has a higher chance of dropping from the Tink of Cunning in the Trial of Cunning or Wotan at the Invincible on Mayhem 4. Now in terms of what this class mod does, it essentially makes it so that whenever Flax Rack from Rack Attack hits an enemy, they split into two more Rack that will seek out other enemies. Now because of this, it makes it a perfect class mod to use with a Rack Attack Flak build. 
Now this will require you to have weapons that have anointments on them like the 100% increased damage uh, for enemies who are damaged by your rack attack. And because your racks will now be hitting a lot more enemies at once, you can clear mobs a hell of a lot quicker with this. Some of my goatee weapons at the moment for this are the Maggie and the Becca. Uh, and of course, you'd also want to have other items such as your artifact boost your action skill cooldown rate. As always, a build specifically for this will be linked down below as well. And uh, just to mention, the class mod can also boost three different skills. The first being Pack Tactics, the second being Headcount, and the third being Grim Harvest. As for its red text, it states, Hail and Well Met, which I think simply refers to the phrase, Hail Fellow, Well Met. Overall, it's another great addition to the class mods for Flak, and uh, definitely one to add to that awesome collection of yours. Another one of the new legendary class mods for Moe's this time is known as the Raging Bear. This again can drop from two different locations, the first being from Billy the Anointed over at the Jacob's Estate, and the second as usual being from Wotan the Invincible. Now as for what this class mod does, uh, whenever Iron Bear kills an enemy, it gains decreased fuel usage, and whenever the Iron Bear takes damage, it gains increased damage. Finally, Gearbox have given the Iron Bear some love. This class mod pretty much makes the Iron Bear overall a lot more viable. You'll find yourself being able to use it for a lot longer, and of course, you'll be doing a lot more damage with this class mod equipped. Now, variants of the Raging Bear can grant skill bonuses to the Stoke the Embers skill, the Deadline skill, and the Stainless Steel Bear skill. In addition to this, it also has the red text, you won't just be strong, you'll be unbeatable, which is a reference to episode 68 of the Adventure Zone podcast. If you want to check out a build around this class mod, I will leave a link down below. And uh, just to mention, good luck farming this one. This took me well over 40 tries. I was using different Vault Hunters in the beginning. I managed to get it twice, once while playing Moe's, and then once while playing Amara. But in general, this was definitely one of the hardest items to obtain for me when farming for it. And for the final class mod of the video, we have the Antifreeze. Obviously, this one is for Zane, and uh, this one can be obtained from the Arbalist of Discipline, uh, from the Trial of Discipline, or Wotan the Invincible. In terms of what this class mod does, when sliding or airborne, Zane gains 40% weapon damage and 20% damage reduction. And when slowed, Zane gains 25% movement speed. This is good when paired up with a Snowdrift artifact and skills like Supersonic Man, Violent Speed, and Violent Momentum, which the class mod can also further boost. As for the red text, it states Jet Propulsion Disengage, which is a reference to the song called Silent Flight Parliament by Between the Buried and Me. Again, a link to a build around this will be linked down below for those of you interested in this one. And uh, that's pretty much it for the video. If you enjoyed the video today, be sure to leave a like down below. It's always greatly appreciated on the channel. And just to quickly mention, here are the giveaway winners for the 20 Borderlands 3 Game Keys giveaway I was hosting. This was supposed to be announced last Wednesday, so I do apologize for the delays. And uh, to the winners, make sure that you're checking your emails or your Twitter, as that is where I will have messaged you. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and click on this video on screen now if you want to check out the top 10 new legendary weapon locations in Borderlands 3.